So I'm going to make a, a series of videos uh, about uh, managing accounts payable and troubleshooting uh, different areas of accounts payable. For this one in particular, I'm going to show you a very personal trick uh, called cleaning up unused vendors from the vendor center. So let me switch over to uh, QuickBooks desktop here. And the concept is if we have a, a, a big vendor list, we have a very large vendor list and we're trying to, let me just open up the vendor center here, and we're trying to reduce that vendor list and we want to limit it to the active ones. Now, we have to be careful with the word active because in QuickBooks, active means that it's available for you to use. And basically everything that you're seeing here would, be, would qualify as inactive, I mean, sorry, as active vendors. If I right click on any one in particular like this, and then I click on uh, make vendor inactive, so right click, make vendor inactive that will make it inactive and then it would only show if i actually switch it up here from active vendors to all vendors so that's that's inactive now the, the true fastest way to make vendors inactive one by one is to go into the list menu add edit multiple list entries and then <clears throat> once that loads we're going to change this from list from vendors some from customers to vendors and then we're going to click on uh, customize columns right there on the top right customize columns and then we're going to make sure that uh, the active or the inactive uh, option is there so we're going to move it from the left side into uh, the right side so it's going to be part of the chosen columns and then i'm going to go ahead and move this up and move this all the way up move it all the way up uh, next to the the vendor's name that way we, we can see it right there and then so i'm going to go ahead and hit ok and um, now I, I see this inactive column here and that inactive column allows me to actually click right so i can and the first time i'm just going to get basically an, an error message but i can click on any of the ones that I actually want to make inactive so i go one by one and click on the one that i want to do this is actually a real fast way of making vendors inactive the challenge is that i don't have any context you know like i don't know if i used this vendor last week last month i don't know if i'm still buying from them so the trick that i'm going to show you is how do we get uh financial data to display in in a way that we can see which vendors are are being used and then use that information to then pick the ones that we're going to make inactive so let me go ahead and close that and not save it so the first thing we will have, we want to do I'll make that active again. So the first thing we have to do is we have to pull a report that shows me vendors with activity. So I'm going to go into the reports menu. So I'm actually going to go to reports and then I'm going to go down to custom reports and then I'm going to click on summary. All right, so I'm doing reports, custom reports, summary. And then when I build the summary report, I have to now be conscious of what I'm doing. So the date range uh, is, is the date range in which we're going to take activities to determine whether or not that vendor is active. So I'm going to hit this fiscal year to date. That way I only want to see vendors that I've used this year. So basically uh, the idea is if I use the vendor this year, we're going to keep them. If I didn't use it this year at all, we're going to get rid of it or make it inactive. So here where it says uh, display rows by, we're going to click on that and click on vendor. Okay. And then here where it says filters, we're going to make sure that it shows all the accounts. That way, any interaction we had with the vendor whatsoever, it's going to show all the accounts. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. And basically, my entire vendor list that has any sort of interaction uh, with the vendor is going to show up. And even some of the ones that don't have, a, even the ones that uh, don't have any activities, those are going to be hidden. So only the ones that, are, that I have worked with are the ones that show on this particular report. So I'm going to go ahead and export this. So I'm going to go into Excel, uh, create new worksheet. Uh, so this is going to be my, my, my spreadsheet for active vendors. Okay. So when I send this to Excel, I'm going to name that tab active vendors. Okay. And then we're going to create a whole different one for, for all vendors together. So there's my spreadsheet. So I'm going to go ahead and change the name to active vendors, or maybe we can call it uh, vendors with activity or something like that. Let me go ahead and delete this extra tab there. I, we don't need that. And I'm also going to clean this up. So I'm going to get rid of all these uh, empty, empty columns here. 
So I actually don't need all these columns here. And we'll get rid of the very last one that says uh, no name and the total. So we don't need that. So this is what you're seeing here is a list of vendors that had activity this year. It's a list of uh, 44 vendors. Let me go back into QuickBooks here. And then I'm going to show a whole different report, which is a report that shows all my vendors. So I'm going to stay on this report here. And then I'm going to go to uh, customize report top left. And then I'm going to click on advanced. And then I'm going to click on all, right? So right now it's only showing me the active. So now I'm going to hit all. So when I click on all, basically all my vendors are going to show up and then I'm going to hit okay. And then basically every vendor that didn't have any activity, it's also going to show in here. Um, the other way to kind of do this is to also on their dates, we can select all, but it doesn't really matter because we already opened it up to every single vendor, even the ones with that activity. Okay, so after I do that, I'm going to go ahead and export that to Excel. So this is the second time that I'm exporting something to Excel. This is the second time I'm doing it. This time it's going to contain all the vendors. So now I have the other spreadsheet, which I'm also going to do the same cleanup. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all these extra lines here. And then uh, the total that I had in the bottom. And then as you can tell on this particular example, uh, there was there's 54 lines. So there's only about... 10 vendors that we're making inactive. And then I'm going to call this one all vendors. Okay. And then this is sort of an Excel thing. So I have to make sure that uh, both of these tabs are on the same uh, QuickBooks, uh, sorry, on the same Excel uh, workbook. So I'm going to go ahead and move that over to here. That way I have just one Excel file that contains both all vendors and active vendors. And the idea is under the all, all vendors tab, I want to add a new column here. So let me insert that here. And then I'm going to click here. I'm going to put here active, All right? So I'll just put here active. And then basically I want in Excel, I want this list to be checked against the active list. And I want uh, the letter Y or, or N or something like that to actually tell me yes, it's active or no, it's inactive. So I do a basic uh, VLOOKUP formula. So for VLOOKUP, basically I look at, I, I highlight this, the, the cell range that I want to use in order to search within. And then up here, uh, you see right there where it says an actual cell number, I'm going to replace that to, to, to name the table. So I'm going to give this table a name. I'm going to call it uh, vendors and then I press enter. So now uh, this whole range, anytime I highlight it, or I'm going to make a, a reference to it, um, it's going to be now labeled vendor. So I, now I can use this in my formula to make reference to it. So I'm going to use do a basic uh, VLOOKUP formula. And then this is an Excel thing. I know this is not a QuickBooks thing, so I apologize. <laughs> but this is a QuickBooks thing. So I'm going to hit equals. And then I'm going to say VLOOKUP. Okay, so there's VLOOKUP. And then I'm going to say what value am I looking for? In this case, I'm looking for the vendor's name. And the first thing it tells me is uh, table array is basically asking me where is this information coming from? And then that's coming from uh, the vendors table. So I'm going to put their vendors. So basically I'm looking for that vendor H Wang inside the vendors table, which is that tab down here that we had set up. And then it says column index. So it says uh, what information from the table you would like to display. So in this case, I'm going to put three and I'll explain that. Actually, I'm going to put two, I apologize. And uh, I'll explain that what that means in a second. And then I'm going to hit uh, comma one more time. And then I'm going to hit false. Now I don't have a lot of time to just explain what that false means. You just Google VLOOKUP and you'll understand what those are. But just for this one, it's going to be false. So I'm going to press enter. And then I'm going to hit the drop down here. And some of these are going to have values and some of them are going to say NA and we'll get back to that in a second. So what I'm going to do is here on the active vendors, I'm going to go ahead and replace all these, all these numbers that they don't really mean anything with uh, a Y. So I'm going to uh, put Y there and then kind of just copy that down. So that means on the active vendors, the second column, the value is going to be a Y. So when I go back into my VLOOKUP formula, I'm basically going to get uh, Y's and then whenever it cannot find the vendor name in the box, it's going to give me an error, the NA error. So what I can do is uh, up here in the formula, I can do is I can put the VLOOKUP inside of another formula called if error. So if error, okay. And then basically I'm telling it, 
if the VLOOKUP renders an error, give me another value. So in this case, the value is going to be an N. Uh, that, I think that makes tons of sense. Uh, that way, if you don't give me a Y, then you give me an N. So I'm going to press enter. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, double click on that uh, pull down box. So the formula gets dragged. And then I basically have a table with all vendors. And some of them are Y's and some of them are N's. And basically the N's are the ones that are inactive. So we are down to the first big step, which is the Excel part. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to go into list, uh, add edit multiple list entries. And then I'm going to pull up my vendor list. Okay, and that's already sorted by alphabetical order. And then under view, I'm going to put here um, all vendors because uh, when we included all of them, we even included the inactive ones. And what I want to do is I want to take uh, a field that I'm currently not using. So I, I kind of have to pick a field that I'm not using and that, that that's the tricky piece. So I'm going to click up here to customize columns and I'm going to see all the, all, all the fields are available. So I typically will take... Uh, uh, I could take a custom field. That, that could be one of the options. That, actually, let me do that option. So I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. And then I'm going to go to list. And then, sorry, not list. I'm going to go to uh, vendors, vendor center. And then I'm going to double click on a, a random vendor. It doesn't matter which one. So let me hit, go to define fields. And I'm going to create a new field called active. Or let's call this one with activity. I think that that would make sense. So enable that for vendors and then I'm going to go ahead and press OK. So now I got a new custom field called with activity. So now when I go back into my uh, add edit multiple, whoops, uh, add edit multiple and and I pull up my vendor list, I can now enable that custom field called with activity. And let me hit the drop down here. Whoops. Let me make sure that we are under vendors. Right, that would help. <laughs> so under vendors, and then I go to customize columns on the top left, and then I enable uh, with activity, and go to add. And I'm going to go ahead and just move that up, all the way up, and I'm going to put it right next to the vendor's name. That way, it's literally right there. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. So basically, I have a blank canvas there that says with activity, and then uh, go back into Excel and go back into my master list, the one that says all vendors, and the one that actually has a Y or N flag. And then I'm going to go ahead and in this case, I'm going to go ahead and delete this column because I don't need that column. And I'm going to, I'm going to take this Y N information and then go all the way down, all the way down. And then basically I'm going to copy this. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this uh, and then go back into QuickBooks. Right. And then all the way in the top, I'm going to paste it. Okay. So once I paste it, now what I'm doing is I just inserted a bunch of Y's and N's throughout all my vendors. And I'm going to go ahead and click save changes. So, so now it's saved. Now what's really neat about this is I can now go to customize columns. I can go look for uh, the activity. Where's my, where's my active or inactive? There it is inactive. So I'm also going to move that up and put it next to it. So hit OK. So basically all I have to do now, and this is going to be kind of cool, is I have to now sort these by the activity. So I'm going to go ahead and click on with activity. That way now my vendor list is, is being resorted and then I have all the Y's and all the N's uh, right basically next to each other. So I'm going to click uh, with activity one more time. So now I have the Y's in the top and the N's in the bottom. So I'm going to go scroll all the way down to my very last, uh, my very first vendor that has the N. And I'm going to go ahead and put a check mark under the inactive column. And then after I do the check mark, I'm going to right click and click copy down. And basically you can have hundreds of thousands of vendors. And within this click, I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, save changes, hit OK. And then when I go in back into my, let me close that, I go back into my vendor list, vendor center. Now I can see if I click on all vendors up here, I can now see that I have uh, 10 inactive vendors. And that's it. That's the trick.